This is a brief presentation on scaphoid fractures and treatment. Scaphoid fractures are the most commonly fractured bone in the wrist. Injury occurs from a fall on an outstretched hand during a mechanical fall or a sports activity. Wrist hyperextension forces the scaphoid against the rim of the distal radius. Usually patients present with wrist pain and palpation over the anatomical snuff box. Scaphoid fracture at the waist or at the midpoint are the most common, and there is a high rate of non union avascular necrosis, 10% or greater. Here's an x ray of a scaphoid fracture. You can see it's a displaced waist fracture with an obvious fracture line. Scaphoid vascular anatomy is very essential to consider when treating a fracture. You can see from this image here, there's a dorsal carpal or superficial palmar branch of the radial artery that goes from distal to proximal. Essentially, the blood vessel goes over the scaphoid to the very end of it and then flows retrograde or backwards. Therefore, fractures at the end of the bone have a higher healing rate versus fractures at the proximal pole. This is a nice schematic showing distal, waist, and proximal fractures and the healing or union rate reaches 100% for distal fractures and goes as low as 27% for proximal fractures. Non-surgical treatment of scaphoid fractures are meant for fractures that are stable and non-displaced. Immobilization in a short arm thumb spike cast is necessary. A patient can continue active and passive range of motion of the fingers and the goal is to limit motion of the thumb. Repeat wrist x-rays or CT scans after several weeks. Evaluate for bone healing. The surgical indications for a scaphoid fracture are many. Proximal pole scaphoid fractures more likely to need surgery. Any scaphoid fracture with greater than one millimeter of displacement usually requires surgery. Certain critical angulation deformities. Fractures where there is a dislocation around the lunate, which is a neighboring bone. Fractures where the scaphoid is in multiple fragments. Any fracture that is unstable with a vertical or oblique fracture pattern. Surgery is achieved typically with a percutaneous pin or a compression screw fixation. Here are two x-rays showing percutaneous screw fixation from a dorsal approach with anatomic reduction of the fracture. This is a lateral view showing excellent reduction of the fracture with the compression screw down the center of the fracture. Outcomes after conservative non-surgical treatment can be as high as 90%. There is a risk of non-union which is higher among smokers and non-operative treatment requires a prolonged time to heal due to the scaphoid anatomy and blood supply. Outcomes after surgical treatment are generally very good. Healing rates depend on the location of the fracture with operative treatment. Healing also requires an extended period of time to heal, roughly two to three months. But even with surgery, a patient can have a non-union and avascular necrosis requiring additional surgeries, requiring excision of a proximal fragment, removal of a smart part of the radius, or bone graft. Here's a picture of follow-up evaluation showing the small scar from the dorsal incision.